Clemens, Here. Clifford, Here. Coert, Cruz, <clears throat> Esri, Here. Portado, Goss, Here. Harper, Here. Hartke, Here. King, Marsh, Here. McGuire, Here. Mitchell, Here. Patterson, Here. Petrie, Rector, Here. Rosales, Here. Store, Summers, Here. Weibel. Present. Do we have a quorum? Um, the prayer tonight. From the rising of the mid, oh, the name of the prayer is short and long in the winter. From the rising of the midwinter sun to its setting, scatter the darkness with the light of your love, O shining one. Make me short on mean thoughts, long on offering words of comfort. Make me short on being driven, long on paying attention. Make me short on focusing only on my own, long on looking beyond. Make me short on obsessive lists, long on spontaneous acts of kindness. Make me short on mindless activity, long on time to reflect. Make me short on tradition as a habit, long on rediscovery and reowning. Make me short on rushing and tiring, long on walking and wondering. Make me short on false festive jollity, jollity. Long on stilling and rooted joy. Make me short on guilt. Long on being merciful to myself. Make me short on being overwhelmed. Long on peace, peaceableness as I set forth this day. Amen. Pledge of Allegiance. Would the clerk please read the notice of the meeting? Notice is hereby given that a regular meeting of the County Board Champaign County, Illinois will convene on January 18th, 2018 at 6.30 p.m. in the Lyle Shields Meeting Room, Brookins Administrative Center, 1776 East Washington Street, Urbana, Illinois, in said county for the purpose of allowing and ordering payments of claims against the county, receiving and acting upon <coughs> reports of committees and such other matters as may be brought before said meeting, which said meeting shall continue in session from day to day until the completion of said business. Thank you. I seek approval of the agenda and the addenda. Moved by Max. Second. Second by Rosales. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? The motion carries. Uh, date and times of the next regular meetings. The f facilities committee meets on Tuesday, February 6th at 6.30. ELOC, Environmental Land Use, meets on Thursday, February 8th. Highway and Transportation, Friday, February 9th, over at the Highway Building. The Committee of the Whole will meet on February 13th at 6.30 on Tuesday. Next County Board meeting is on Thursday, February 22nd, and the meeting starts at 6.30. However, I should point out to all of you here that we're going to have photos taken starting at 5.15. I'm sure you'll get an email reminding you of that. Okay, public participation. Is there anybody who wishes to speak at this time? A rarity. Okay, let's move on to uh, the consent agenda. Are there any, any uh, items you want to take off the consent agenda? For those of you who are new, just remind you the consent agenda are items that pass through committees unanimously, and uh, therefore the, uh, the consent agenda has to ask, also has to pass unanimously, but on a roll call vote. Okay, we have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Moved by Mr. Goss, second by Mr. Hartke. Roll call, please. Tinsley? Yes. <clears throat> Anderson? Oh, Clemens? Yes. Clifford? Yes. Coert? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Esri? Yes. Porta oh, Goss? Yes. Harper? Yes. Hartke? Yes. King? Yes. Marsh? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Mitchell? Yes. Patterson? Yes. Petrie? Yes. Rector? Yes. Rosales? Yes. Store? Summers, Weibel. Yes, motion carries. Uh, next, we have communications from county board members. I have one. Uh, and I'll send this out to all county board members uh, tomorrow. Uh, the UCCI and uh, the University of Illinois Extension Leadership Academy have announced their dates for the uh, leadership, leadership Academy. If any of you want to uh, participate in that, 
you can sign up by March 1st, and I, again, I will send this out to you tomorrow. It, you also can send up other uh, people interested in politics and leadership too, it doesn't have to be county board members. The, uh, the, the academy includes uh, or consists of me uh, five meetings, uh, and all of them are on a Saturday, with two of them being on a Friday, Saturday. And the final uh, uh, meeting is actually takes place in Springfield at the Lincoln Museum where the, uh, there's actually graduation ceremonies. So I will send that out to you tomorrow. Mr. Rector. Uh, yes, on February 3rd is one winter night. I'll be sleeping out again downtown. This is my fifth year in a box. So uh, put a warm jacket on, bring me some hot chocolate and some money and stop through downtown and see me, please. Do you have a location, approximate? Not yet, I'll let you know. Thank you. All right, anything else? Uh, Mr. Book. Wednesday the 24th, uh, the poverty simulation of the, the Mojave School Districts. I see two people here already signed up and they are still looking for other adult volunteers. So if you could volunteer, call on myself or Nicole Rummel at the, at the uh, Mojave School District. Thank you. Could you elaborate what you're looking for as far as volunteers? So the, the adult volunteers are, are, would, would, would uh, arrive at about 11 o'clock and they would do training for what your role is simulating poverty. The, whole, the purpose of it is, is that you have a bunch of, of uh, young kids that don't really have an idea what it's about. So the, okay. the adult volunteers are really, will be role playing uh, impoverished people. Okay. All right, thank you. Thanks, sir. Anything else? All right. Let's move on to, uh, I seek approval of the minutes for the December 19th, 2017 regular meeting and the January 9th, 2018 special meeting. Second. Moved by Ms. Petrie, seconded by Mr. King. Discussion on these minutes. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Next up, we have the presentation of the 2016 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. Mr. Farnett. <coughs> So I'm going to take the liberty of introducing these gentlemen since I worked with them last year. Uh, joining us from our outside accounting firm of Baker Tilly are Jason Coyle and Michael Mallott. Uh, they are the principals with Baker Tilly and they've got a short presentation about the 2016 CAFR. Well, good evening. It's good to be with you. Um, we're just going to... Uh, talk briefly on the 2016 CAFR and the management letter. So I know, I know, I'm not sure if anyone has it in front of you actually, so I'm just going to talk um, kind of high level and then Michael say a few words as well. Um, we are, this is the first year that Baker Tilly has done the audit of the county and we're happy to be here to present the CAFR to you. You do continue to issue, uh, as was mentioned, a CAFR, which is, stands for Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. Um, it's a higher level reporting than you're actually required to do. Um, so there's more transparency of your operations in here. Um, so you should feel proud to continue to do that. And you're one of the few governments we work with that actually prepares this entire 300 page document yourself. So another thing uh, you should be proud of as well. A lot of places um, allow us to prepare the financial statements, um, but to have people in house who know how to do that is, is great. Um, our opinion is in here, which is there's three pages of our opinion. It's what's called an unmodified opinion. It's the only thing in here that actually comes from our firm. The rest of the information is all the county's information. Um, like I said, it's an unmodified opinion, which is the highest level of assurance we can give over your financial statements. Um, I know not everyone uh, comes to the county board to uh, understand all the finances necessarily, and particularly read a 300-page document, but there is a section in here called MD&A, or Management's Discussion Analysis, which is near the front of the financial statement. starts on page about 24. Um, that's about 10 pages long. So if you didn't read anything else in here, I'd encourage you to, to open it up and read that about 10 page section called MDNA or Management Discussion Analysis, which just summarizes what went on during the year and kind of highlights some of the bigger changes from the prior year. Um, as the name implies, it was written by management, um, and so they do a really good job of, of putting that together. Um, another piece of information, um, last year, uh, I'm sure you went over the fact that um, the net pension liabilities for the first time were placed on the financial statements of the county. Um, you're fortunate in the sense that you only have a few pension plans and they're all administered by IMRF, the only municipal retirement fund. Uh, pension plans in Illinois get a lot of press these days. A lot of them um, aren't very well funded, uh, particularly ones 
with the state and up uh, north in the Chicagoland area. Um, but uh, the ones administered by MRF um, have always been fairly well funded, and so you're fortunate to be in the position that your pensions overall are pretty well funded compared to a lot of other governments in Illinois. Um, and so your net pension liability with all its components comes to about $8.3 million. Um, so that, uh, again, is for the first time on your, or not for the first time, it's for the second time on your financial statements, uh, but that liability has always um, been around. Um, I think the only uh, couple more points of information, uh, your primary operating fund, as you're probably familiar with, is your general fund. Um, that uh, had a decrease in fund balance of about $400,000 for the year. So um, not quite breaking even, but uh, fairly close to it. Um, uh, the other piece I always like to talk about is uh, your enterprise funds, which are the funds that for the most part are meant to be self-sustaining. Uh, your enterprise fund is the nursing home. Uh, you do support that a little bit with property taxes, uh, though uh, that fund uh, lost uh, $1.8 million for the year, so the ex expenditures exceeded uh, the revenues by that. Um, a, a big part of that was related to the fact that um, uh, some of the older accounts receivables were written off during the year, um, but I just wanted to to point that out uh, from your financial statements. Other than that, there's a lot of really good information in here. I'd encourage you to, to take a look through it if you can. Um, there's a lot of, you know, the front of the report starts very summarized and as you go through, it gets a lot more detailed on, on all the fund levels. Um, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Mike to say a few words uh, about our management letter and then obviously we'll, we'll open it up to any questions you might have. So in addition to kind of looking at the numbers, making sure they look good, uh, we also kind of take a look at the operations and processes, kind of the, the high volume, high dollar value areas of the county um, to kind of see what, what's going on and that allows us to then kind of identify how we're going to approach our audit work. Um, what the communication letter does, among other things that I'll quickly get into, is identify some of the things we saw during the audit, um, during these walkthroughs and some recommendations related to that. Um, additionally, there's also some communication language in here. It's kind of a this is more of a letter from us on kind of how things went and also what to expect next year in planning for next year's audit as well. Um, it also identifies some things like what's our responsibility as auditors, what's management's responsibility as part of the audit process, and also what the board is those charged with government's responsibility. And primarily that is focused on knowing that we work for you. You know, while we work with JJ and Barbara, um, you know, we, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, we really truly report to you. And if there's ever any time you have a questions, concerns, um, thoughts you'd like to express to us, we're always available and we're always open to that. And that's always something we just like to remind you every year that we are available and that open door policy is an important part of our audit process. Um, some of the other things in here that, you know, if you take a peek in and kind of get some, some points as to how the audit went, obviously, you know, that, you know, we had no issues with working with management or we, I were able to give you a strong opinion and some other recommendations. There's one or two pages in here with some great nighttime reading about the upcoming accounting standards that are coming through. So, you know, if you're having trouble sleeping, I suggest going to that. Um, the only thing in there that's actually, tr you know, truly impactful that you'll see in the coming years, and it's a few years down the road, is that they're changing how the agency funds, so the circuit clerk, the collector's accounts, the treasurer's office, how some of those accounts are being presented. Um, there, it's going to be probably more comprehensive in terms of what's being shown than what is shown right now. So it's not till 2019, so it's definitely a few years down the road, but that's one of the big changes coming down the pipeline. So it's a quick summary, you know, two pages of all the things there, it, just to give you a heads up that there are some changes and they're always working on keeping us and Barbara and everybody else on their toes <laughs> each year and um, finding new things to kind of fine tune what gets reported to you and to the public. Um, kind of the only other thing that we do along is, you know, we also do a deep dive compliance review uh, for your federal uh, grant programs, and there we had no findings. It was a clean audit on that side as well um, that we issued concurrently. I think that's Mr. Cackler as well, I believe. Um, so other than that, I just, you know, thanking JJ and Barbara for all the efforts they put in to help us get through the audit um, and with our first year and working through that together, and we look forward to uh, working with them again for another year. And I answer. <laughs> Questions from the board? Ms. Petrie. Um, these are more exploratory questions because uh, you only talked about 2016 and in looking over 2016, do you at any time look at, at the year that we've also gone through but you're not doing an audit on? 
So like 2017, for yeah. example? No, not, that'll be next year, obviously, we'll, is what we're advising for 2017. Uh, we only audited the information for 2016. Mm -hmm. You, you do re look at some of the subsequent information in, okay. it, in its impact on 2016. Um, so some of estimates, some of the you know the receipts and disbursements that happen after year end, um, but that's primarily focused on what that impact would be on the 2016 numbers. Numbers. Okay. So then, what I need is I've always pondered this, and now I'm going to verbalize it. We get this audit on back here. But we're now in 2018, and we're struggling with tight finances in the county, and we sort of knew that was coming through 2017, other than checking on us to make certain that we're doing everything appropriately. What are some of the other things that I can learn from all your hard work that I can work with for 2018? It's a good question. Um, <laughs> We had, in the document Mike has, I mean, this isn't necessarily financially related per se, but we did have some recommendations for improvements in the internal controls um, that we've sh obviously shared in that document and shared with management in, in greater detail. Um, and so I know that those are things that they'll be working on to try to, to strengthen your checks and balances, uh, if you will. Um, sometimes those take uh, additional resources, so I'm sure those will be things they'll be evaluating as well. Um, I mean, that's kind of the biggest byproduct of our audit, if you will, is that uh, can then be worked on by management to uh, enhance the organization. Um, I hope I answered your question yeah, with that. But In terms of uh, the finances for 18, and, and, and one of the things you know, we were working on is obviously incre you know, reducing the time between the end of the fiscal year and the issuance of the audit for 17 so that we are providing you um, with the opinion on the report you know, in, in a shorter time frame. Um, which I think will be you know, helpful as well as you continue to look forward to future years. Um, I, I think primarily as you're focusing on that, that's really going to be more, you know, us, if, if you have specific concerns and issues, we can certainly always provide what we see elsewhere, what, you know, we've seen along the way. You know, as an auditor, there's certain things we're not supposed to be doing. We have to maintain our independence, but all the, obviously contextualizing things and through working with the auditor's office and working with you guys is always, we can provide you the insights we've always had. Um, so some of that is related to the audit. It's more kind of outside of the audit for that kind of guidance. The audit still is kind of backwards looking. Um, so and other than seeing where you're starting the next year off or, you know, or the year prior, um, it's not necessarily always other than kind of the recommendations for operational things. Um, the perfect tool, if you will, for the next year. Um, obviously budget and things like that um, are probably a more, a better indicator of how, of what's available to you going forward. I have one question. Sure. Uh, it has to do with the, uh, the fact that several county departments do not regularly reconcile decentralized cash collections. And you recommend a routine, timely basis. What would you recommend by, when we say timely, like I don't, weekly, monthly, daily? G generally, it's a, it's a monthly process. Monthly, okay. And, and within, you know, in terms of bank accounts, and we generally best practices within 30 days of the okay. end of that month. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Marsh. Does your, your budget, have, your, does your uh, audit have any impact on our bond rating? Uh, not, not our audit per se, um, the, the numbers in it, um, but the, they're your numbers, not our numbers. We're just attesting to those numbers. Um, so we perform yeah, 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 well, we perform it, but they're your financial statements. Um, so uh, depending on your financial or how the bond rating agencies read your financial health, um, that could impact your bond rating. Uh, the opinion, obviously, as I mentioned, is unmodified. So that means who's ever using these financial statements can rely on them to make um, important decisions about your financial health. You know, not every place, although most places do receive an unmodified opinion, there are times where we have to modify our opinion for certain reasons. You know, we weren't able to audit a particular part of the organization. Like that. that definitely could impact your bond rating, um, but the unmodified opinion wouldn't, wouldn't hurt it at all. Further questions, discussion? Seeing none, okay, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. If I could make just one brief yeah. comment. Um, I just, as to Mr. Weibel, as to your question about the reconciliations, I do know that the departments that uh, uh, we needed to talk to have already implemented changes, and so that's uh, uh, being done on a more timely basis already. 
Um, but I just want to take a moment to thank the staff of the auditor's office, since this is my last audit. Um, I really do appreciate the hard work that they put into this. Uh, of course, Barbara Ramsey, the chief deputy and accounting manager here for the county, she puts in numerous hours on this project, and, and uh, you should all be very proud to have her working here at, at Champaign County. Um, also, Carol Roberson, who is the senior accountant, she does uh, a tremendous work on the accounts payable. She is an institution of knowledge on anything accounts payable related, and I encourage you to talk to her if you ever have questions about uh, anything related to the way we pay bills here at Champaign County. Uh, Jing Lin is our cash is our receiving accountant, and she has uh, also has an important part of this process. Um, and she has uh, been with the county for over 10 years and is tremendous. And then this year we also had Chris Wilson and, and Brittany Tammon. Chris came in mid, uh, left us mid-year to join the uh, mental health board uh, as their new finance manager. And Brittany stepped right in and came right up to the to bat and uh, was a, a great help throughout the entire process. And then uh, uh, Stacy Norton is the secretary in the office, and she helps pull everything together. So they, I, I really do need to send out my gratitude to the, the office, uh, the auditor's office, for their work. And it's been a privilege being your auditor the last five years. I look forward to being your treasurer for a long time. Thank you, Mr. Farney. Okay, let's go on to standing committees. We have nothing from ELUC and uh, the highway from the committees. Uh, let's go to finance. Uh, I would, is there any objection to having Mr. Goss do these, although he's not quite the vice chair yet? Seeing none, go ahead, Mr. Goss. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move adoption of resolution number 2018-7, authori authorizing payment of claims. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Anderson. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. I move adoption of resolution number 2018-8, authorizing purchases not following purchasing policy. Second by Mr. Harper. Discussion? Ms. Petrie. Oh, an information question. I don't know if it goes to John or slides over to Diane, but I was impressed how few items are on that list. It is short. <laughs> what? Okay. Thank you, Ms. Petrie. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Finance Committee uh, moves to adopt resolution number 2018-9, authorizing budget amendment 17-00058, fund 080 general corporate, department 030 circuit clerk, Increased appropriations are $660. Increased revenue is none from the fund balance. Reason Westlaw subscriptions and abandoned bond payments. Is there a second? Second by Ms. Cohort. Discussion. I will explain the bond payments thing. What it is is we, we uh, send a check to people returning their bond, but the check gets returned to us. And then later on, these people come back and say, I want my bond money. That's what we're doing. We're paying back that bond money. That's only like $120 or $140 of this. Most of it's the Westlaw payments. Westlaw, Westlaw uh, is a service that we pay for to, to replace all those li uh, law library books that you, people used to have behind their shelves. In fact, if you go to the free section of Craigslist, I look today, you can get a whole set of them for free. Okay, enough on that. Uh, we need a roll call vote on this. Right. Tinsley? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Clemens? Yes. Clifford? Yes. Cohort? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Esri? Yes. <clears throat> Goss? Yes. Harper? Yes. Hartke? Yes. <clears throat> King? Yes. Marsh? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Mitchell? Yes. Patterson? Yes. Petrie? Yes. Rector? Yes. Rosales? Yes. Store? Yes. Summers? Yes. Weibel? Yes. Motion carries. Finance Committee moves adoption of resolution number 2018-10, authorizing the adjustment of compensation of nursing home board of directors members. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Clifford. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? No. Motion carries. 
Uh, Mr. Goss, why don't you go ahead and go do the uh, next one under new business. Okay, I move adoption of resolution number 2018-24, authorizing budget amendment 17-00060, fund 080, general corporate, department 026, county treasurer, increased appropriations of $2,816, increased revenue none from fund balance, reason to cover final benefit to pay out to retired chief deputy per county employee policy. Employment policy. Is there a second? Second by Mr. King. Discussion? Uh, seeing none, roll call, please. Tinsley? Yes. <clears throat> Anderson? Yes. Clemens? Yes. Clifford? Yes. Coert? Yes. Cruz? Esri? Yes. Goss? Yes. Harper? Yes. Hartke? Yes. King? Yes. Marsh? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Mitchell? Yes. Patterson? Yes. Petrie? Yes. Rector? Yes. Rosales? Yes. Store? Yes. Summers? Yes. Weibel? Yes, motion uh, carries. Uh, thank you, Mr. Goss. Uh, next up, we have an item from the addendum from Highway. We need a motion to suspend the rule because this did not go through committee. Is there something to move that? M moved by Mr. Esbury, second by Mr. Hartke. Discussion? See none. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion carries. Ms. Cole, would you please move that motion, please? and transportation um, is asking for the adoption of resolution number 2018-28 authorizing the submission of a capital grant amendment number one and execution of any subsequent agreements for the state and federal mass transit capital fund and I so move. Second by Mr. Mitchell. And we have uh, Zoe uh, Keller here from the RPC. Would you come up and give us a three minute or, two, or rather a three sentence description of this or whatever you think is appropriate? Since the title is sort of is sort of blase, or the motion sort of blase as, as to what the money is actually used for. All right, so this is for the um, capital grant that we have for our rural transit system. Um, we originally had about $15,000 in the fund and IDOT came back to us and um, said that we had some available additional funds. Um, they asked us to completely spend down what they were giving us, which we were having a difficult time coming up with um, justifiable and logical projects. Um, but I actually, we worked with them to um, add benches for the um, deviated fixed route in Rantoul. Um, so we're able to purchase some infrastructure that before um, IDOT had said we weren't able to use those funds on. Um, so that was a big success for us. And in the packet that I sent out, um, there's a detailed line item budget for you. Um, and the memo also details the projects that will be carried out with that funding. Okay, any questions? I want to point out this is Zoe's last uh, appearance before this before this uh, board, before she goes back goes up to Chicago and has a, <laughs> a job downtown, right? Yes. For IDOT. Yep. So I'll still be in the loop. <laughs> I'll literally be in the loop, and okay. I'll figuratively be in the loop also. <laughs> I do want to thank you for all the good work you've done in the time you've been here. We do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Further discussion on this? See none. Uh, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Okay, next up we have a couple items uh, under other business. Um, Mr. King, would you mind moving the first two? Move to the adoption of resolution number 2018-11 approving agreement between the Champaign County Board, the Sheriff, and the Illinois Fraternal, Fraternal Order of Police Court Security Officers, January, January 1, 2017 through December 31st, 2019. Second by Mr. Hartke. Discussion? See none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. All right. And second, uh, motion to allow the agreement with SAK Management Services, LLC, to automatically renew at the end of 
the initial term on March 31st, 2018 for the first renewal term to continue through May 31st, 2018. Uh, uh, second by Mr. Storer. Discussion? I, Mr. King, go ahead. Question. So it's from March to May, that's the, the period of the extension that we're asking for? Okay. Correct, it's as of the contract, it's a two month extension. Okay. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? The motion carries. And Mr. Rosales, would you do the last item, please? Adoption of resolution number 2018-27 to establish an RFP uh, for 2018 through 2018-001 evaluation committee. Is there a second? Second by Ms. Petrie. Um, any discussion on that item? They will start meeting in early February. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? The motion carries. Is there any other business? See, none. We're adjourned. And I think that's a record. <laughs>